Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. It's that time again. The weekend has begun, and we are talking watches. As ever, all you see here is for sale. Names, references, and prices in the description below. To purchase, reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com, and if you're in a selling mood, we are in a buying mood, as we're purchasing single watches or entire collections. We're looking to acquire inventory, and we are paying our best prices since the company was founded in 2017. For a sale to us, Team also at thewatchbox.com, your one-stop shop for all things luxury watch. Let's jump straight into an unexpected high horology piece from Hublot, launched in 2017 in 70 pieces. This is the Hublot Tech Frame Ferrari Tourbillon Chronograph White Gold Sapphire, a sapphire internal case. A white gold latticework space frame like structure, the first ever for Hublot, a watch designed by Ferrari, built by Hublot. This is what a Ferrari branded watch should be a supercar for your wrist. White gold externally, 45 millimeters in diameter. The timepiece is easier to wear than that size implies because of the slope of the lugs. Now, the sapphire ensconced movement. HUB caliber 6311 is true high horology. Tourbillon, column wheel chronograph, five day power reserve. All of that, I should add, with a tourbillon whose upper bridge is made of sapphire and thus appears to be a flying tourbillon with nothing to encumber the owner's view of the tourbillon itself. The watch features a screw down crown, a mono pusher chronograph, which is wonderful fun to enjoy. And as you can see, both the lateral clutch and the column wheel are visible on the dial side of the tech frame tourbillon chronograph. Flip it all over and there is a very cool techno industrial satin grained nickel anthracite caliber mirrored beveling on the edge. That's probably the only time I've referred to mirrored beveling on an Hublot with the wheels, including the barrel, handsomely executed in silver and satin and You'll note the evacuation of the barrel. It is a skeletonized barrel in this limited edition of 70 pieces. The model you see right here, the specific serial number is my lucky number of 11. There's more than meets the eye as you have a push button, quick release system for the strap, which by the way is a delectable silicone and super soft and gummy. This is a timepiece that offers an immense amount of high style, but also sophistication. We don't tend to think of Hublot as a movement manufacturer, much less a great one, but that's exactly what Hublot is when it puts its mind to something like this. 2% of Hublot's annual sales are the Masterpiece Collection. The watch is made by the high-end shop that used to be known as B&B &B Concept and which was purchased by Hublot in 2010. Those are the folks who make the crazy stuff, including the LaFerrari. But whereas the LaFerrari is designed by Hublot, the tech frame tourbillon chronograph you see here is designed by Ferrari itself. From one unexpected watch to another, this is the timepiece that proves Rolex can crack a smile. Launched in 2014, this is the Milgauss 116400 GV Z Blue. Z Blue, as you can see, on a dial that looks a little bit like electrical arcing. That plasma-like blue, gorgeous, with orange accents, the white gold applique, the green-tinted GV Glas Ver crystal, and of course, that distinctive lightning bolt second hand, which though it seems oddly postmodern, is authentic to the original mid-1950s Milgauss models. They featured that lightning bolt hand. Now the watch is functionally identical to the 116900 Air King, but very different in character with far more color, and I would even say a little bit more coherence than that instrument-inspired dial. It's also more upscale as the timepiece features more white gold on its dial. It features polished links on its bracelet, and as you can see, the Milgauss a timepiece that's difficult to categorize but functionally has a clear purpose. It is still highly anti-magnetic, it and the Air King. You have the soft iron inner cage around the movement to bend magnetic field lines around the caliber. You have an anti-magnetic escapement and then you have a blue oxidized anti-magnetic niobium zirconium hairspring inside the watch which is 40 millimeters in stainless steel. So while Milgauss was the anti-magnetic quality of the original, I suspect this watch is far more than 1,000 Gauss anti-magnetic. At first glance, you might not recognize why this IWC Portuguese perpetual calendar is a rarity. 
But the reference 5022, the second generation IWC Perpetual Calendar, had something special about it, not true of any IWC Perpetual before or since. This was the 42 millimeter version. All the rest are just over 44. This watch in pink gold with Perpetual Calendar represents something rarely built for only four model years. The 42 millimeter version of the Portuguese Perpetual Calendar is more wearable on a normal sized wrist as 42 is a fairly standard size for a Portuguese, and you can see my wrist 16 centimeters circumference wears it quite easily. Now there's a lot to love inside, as we have a caliber IWC 51613, we have the Portuguese case size with a movement that is size to suit, and it is important that this 50,000 series movement, which descended from the original 5,000, is sized for the case because this is the world's largest automatic winding movement. Seven day power reserve rose gold medallion inside the rotor. We have the Peloton winding system, and you can see by this generation, the Paul arms themselves have been crafted of ceramic to reduce wear and tear and eliminate the problem of dirt on the movement, previously an issue. Free sprung, five position, high virology style adjustment, handmade overcoil hairspring beating away at 21.6. There's also a lot to love about the other side of the movement, the perpetual calendar, which is mechanically programmed. We're gonna make sure we're through the day change danger zone right here, but it is mechanically programmed to the year 2100. Seven day power reserve and a system that allows you to quickly and easily adjust all indications of the perpetual calendar in sync. Note that even the moon phase adjusts correctly. So all you do is set the correct date for the year you're in and everything, including the year, the decade, day, date, month, and moon phase will move to correctly represent the present day. So you need not set all of the indications separately. You'll also note the use of a venturing glass for the moon phase base, giving a little flourish of style and quality on a dial that already has an embarrassment of technical and aesthetic riches. Full deployment clasp, red gold like the case, this is a special opportunity to own the most wearable of the Portuguese perpetuals. But if 42 is still too large, consider 39. This is the H Moser and C Venturer Purity. It is the Venturer Small Seconds Purity with an explosive Fume dial, red gold case, a bubble-like sapphire atop, and you can see those lovely concave mirrored lug profiles with vertical satin finish. Turn it all over, and you can see the degree of detailing on the lugs, the sculpted flanks, the domed bezel, and that narrow band of vertical satin finish. You've got a simple but thoughtfully detailed beveled and satinated Moser pin buckle, and then that Fume dial that is remarkably clear, pure, one might even say, and with a slight gradient, it fades from dark silver to black at its edge. Now you have leaf hands in rose gold, you have hacking or stop seconds, a remarkably clean, no date dial. This is a watch dedicated to minimalism with few but strong styling cues. The movement inside, HMC 327, power reserve on case back, three day power reserve, manual wind, 18K old school pocket watch like beat rate, We'll try to hold that steady for just a moment so you can see the balance. It is both free sprung and equipped with a full balance bridge like a sports watch, so it's very shock resistant for a dress style timepiece. It also features a handmade overcoil hairspring of Moser's own manufacture. Moser makes everything, including the escapement, the balance, and the hairspring via its precision engineering subsidiary. Moser of Schaffhausen, the other fully integrated manufacturer of Schaffhausen, is a remarkably vertical company and making only 1,500 watches per year. I like to consider them the German Swiss FP Journe. You'll also note the distinctive double crested Cote de Genève used on the case back. Now the watch is about 12.2 millimeters thick, so you can see on my wrist, very easy to wear. The case is compact, the lugs are short, the look is minimalist, but the watch is still strong. It's not strident or obnoxious by any means, and that's rare with colored gold watches. This one manages to wear its colored gold with remarkably good manners. A timepiece that's striking, minimalist, even in its branding. If anything, Moser is too modest with this unmarked dial. They should take more pride and stick their name on it. Well, maybe not this dial, but this is a timepiece that speaks to the best of Moser. All right, launched. Well, can you believe it's been most of a decade? 2013 and the Batman has never been hotter. This is the previous generation, or I should say Gen 1 Batman. Let me remove my finger 
smudges from this case because this is a glorious piece of 904L stainless steel, 40 millimeters with ceramic bezel insert. When this watch, when this watch launched back in 13, I don't think anyone imagined that it would be at the peak of its popularity in 2020, even after a successor model was introduced. But although the new model gained the Jubilee for the first time in a generation and a three-day movement, most folks still prefer the old Oyster bracelet. I'm not going to lie, it looks more like a sports watch, even as the Jubilee probably vents a little better, the look of the Oyster is somewhat more butch. It's not a thick watch, and as you can see, with a ceramic bezel insert and 24 hours radial, you can use that second time zone, the 24 hour hand, in conjunction with the GMT offset of your destination to find three time zones simultaneously on this dial. Even when you're not, you have two independent time zones, one of which is the 12 hour Mercedes hand, that is your local time, and the other of which is going to be that 24 hour blue second time zone. To activate everything in sync, pull the crown out to the second stop, and now you can see everything moves pirouetting at different speeds. The timepiece, of course, 100 meters water resistant and fully loomed as a full service sports watch. And I think I'm gonna do my first loom shot of the day because though this is not a dive watch, nevertheless, it is ready and waiting for aquatic activities, action after dark, high flying or low, this is the watch to go with. Let's admit that most owners of this GMT are going to be armchair aviators, but if you are a card-carrying pilot, thanks to the water resistance and the full bracelet, it's nice to know that this is also worthy of those who fly seaplanes, flying boats, or simply have their water wings. All right, Patek Philippe. Today, I have a trio of Titans, and I'm proud to share the one that is my personal favorite. This is the 5101P, technically part of the Gondolo collection. When this was launched in 2003, it was a showstopper, a COSC chronometer, a 10-day power reserve, a tourbillon, and all of that in an Art Deco-inspired case. It looks rather like the vintage reference 714, and it also appears as though it's the vaulted peak of the Chrysler building on your wrist. Now, it's about 51.6 millimeters lug to lug and just over 28 millimeters wide. It's a thin watch, though, just over 12 millimeters thick. You can see the diamond between the lugs, signifying that this is a platinum Patek Philippe of modern manufacture. And you can see how the case camber works to your advantage, even on a small wrist. I could recommend it for a wrist as small as about 14 and a half centimeter circumference. And you can see, as a Patek dress watch, it could and should fit underneath a tight sleeve. Turning it all over though, well, that's where the romance happens. This caliber, built and sized for the case, of course, the 2820 properly formed for the case in which it's held. Think about how rare that is with Patek watches. The 215 manuals, the 240 and the 324 automatics, the new 26330, they are all stuck into cases that are designed and then filled with existing movements. This movement was designed for and only ever used in the 5101. Yes, it's a 10-day power reserve, but also a chronometer, COSC certified. It's a rare confluence of high horology and put up or shut up COSC certification. Now you have the tourbillon on, I'm gonna do my best to get really close to it. Moving in one minute circuits, it's free sprung, adjusted in five positions, over coil hairspring, gyro max style free sprung architecture for toughness. And there is a full bridge, all black polished, for this tourbillon carriage. You'll note that the arms of the bridge are completely rounded and specular finished. One, two interior angles, the Ponson de Genève, which was discontinued, including on the 5101s after mid-2009. And of course, we have gilded settings for the individual pivot jewels. As you can see, the pivot jewels set in gold, gilded, chiton-like cavities, and although these are not true chiton because they are not screw-held, that gold gilding is designed to recall the pocket watch era, as is the traditional center wheel style train that you see here. All the screw heads black polished, all of the coat de Genève light and luminous. This is an all-time great, a modern day legend, and I have to say in the current environment, a little bit underrated, given where people are putting their money and what money is currently chasing. Patek Philippe complications and grand complications, a little bit underrated for what they are these days and way ahead of its time with this salmon dial. Originally launched in 2011, the Patek Philippe 5216 launched in platinum for 2013. 
13, 14, 15, and 16, this 39.5 millimeter platinum tourbillon minute repeater perpetual calendar retrograde was manufactured in perhaps 12 pieces per year in this metal. Again, you've got the diamond between the lugs, it's a platinum patek, and an absolute stunner with the retrograde date, the aperture style perpetual calendar, the moon phase, which is accurate out to 122 years, and the tourbillon. Now the watch you see here can speak for itself because it is a repeater, and I'm gonna do my best to fire up the minute repeater. Patek repeaters aren't necessarily the loudest, but in my opinion, they are the most sonorous. They speak a poetry. A verse without words. Now I'm going to do my best to remove the fingerprints. I do have a polishing cloth and it's for times like this and watches like this. The movement, of course, is manual wind, 48 hour power reserve, tourbillon, perpetual calendar, black polished strikers, black polished bat wing bridge for the tourbillon carriage. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine interior angles at least on this movement. And for those who are maybe new to finishing or have heard this term, but without explanation, an interior angle is the sharp cleft line where two sharp bevels meet. If you have a real mirrored bevel and it meets another mirrored bevel, there should be a sharp break, not a rounded edge. A rounded edge generally indicates machine finishing. The sharp break, that line that appears to have been cleft with a knife, that is the sign of true high-end hand finish. The third wheel of the movement is made of 14 karat gold, which is mechanical grade gold. It's a bit harder than case grade gold. And finishing this 14 karat wheel by itself takes 10 hours. You'll also note copious black polish as everything that is black polished on this movement turns black as I move it away from its one reflective angle. It is so smooth, it reflects light only in one direction. That's why it is called poly noir or black polish. This is black, but not black polish. This, the 5370P, recently discontinued with black dial, features a black enamel dial. Yes, black enamel for years, even if you bought Grand Complications, and that 5216 certainly qualified, that does not have a black enamel dial, as Patek has only recently started equipping its foremost flagships with black enamel crafted in-house. The luster, the depth, the wet paint gleam of enamel is unique. It also protects the dial against oxidation, water damage, tarnish, or aging, so it will be beautiful eternally. Now this model came out in 2015. It's 41 millimeters in platinum with white gold cabochon inside its evacuated lug profiles. You can see that inside the lugs are satin finished externally all of polish. So those cabochon, those little caps, those are white gold, but the case is platinum. You can see there is a coaxial chronograph split second trigger in the crown. And it is a split second chronograph with white gold applique briguet numerals on the dial, a special signature on the foremost of Patek Philippe watches. You saw the same on the 5101. You can see there is also a recession and a channeling in the case on the non-crown side, and a concave bezel that makes the watch look more compact and svelte even than it is, and it's already quite skinny. You'll also note that the hands at the center are loomed, so this is a surprisingly practical companion. Through the case back, a chronograph as Patek will do, but you can see there is a second column wheel, a forest of springs, and then there is a pincer system at center to grab and stop that second seconds hand. 65 hour power reserve, manual wind, six position adjusted, free sprung with a handmade Breguet overcoil hairspring. The truly high end Patek watches still feature handmade overcoils, not silicon hairsprings. You can see the black polished cap to the column wheel. All of the chronograph components are steel. They're satinated on their top and they're beveled beautifully. I'll try to show this. They're beveled beautifully on their sides. You can see that glint and gleam, the mirrored polish on the edge, not just of the brass bridges, but also of the steel components. You'll You'll also note just how much depth this movement has. Extraordinarily intricate. The use of a lateral clutch and a column wheel is a bit anachronistic as 
chronograph architectures go, but Patek actually considers this to be its premium arrangement, and only its foremost chronograph watchmakers work with the lateral clutches. The vertical clutch is considered to be easier to service and is actually handled by a lower level of watchmaker at Patek Philippe. This is the haute de gamme, a timepiece that wears, well, frankly, easily, comfortably, and naturally, it's also flat enough to sit underneath a cuff. You can see that diamond between the lugs, yet again, a platinum Patek Philippe, not excessively broad. I wouldn't necessarily wear it on a wrist much smaller than 14 and a half centimeters circumference. It is large by Patek standards, but it is not overwhelmingly so. And again, it's cuffable because it's not thick. I'm gonna bring back the 5216 for a moment because I'm not sure that I did a wrist shot just now. You can see how much easier it is to read the dial. As you have the leap year cycle, you have the day, and you have the month, along with the retrograde date at center. I find this easier to read than the radial indicators of other Patek Philippe calendar systems. This is just more natural and at a glance legible. Again, this one's thin too, in spite of the extraordinary complexity that sits within. And now, let us discuss Hamilton. Ordinarily, Patek Philippe Grand Complications don't act as a warm-up for a Hamilton reveal, but I have to say that this Hamilton khaki navy scuba dive watch punches above its weight for quality, both real and perceived. 40 millimeters in stainless steel, it's a watch that represents an attractive and one might even say encouraging point of entry to those who want to test the waters figuratively and literally with luxury watches. Priced at only a few hundred dollars new, this is a watch that gives you a lifetime of serviceability as it can always be repaired, it can always be serviced, it is not a fashion watch even though it is priced at a point that is generally occupied by disposable fashion watches. This is a real mechanical automatic diver 80 hour power reserve, truly impressive in that eyes closed, it feels as solid as a Breitling. I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell it in terms of weight or solidity from a Breitling Super Ocean. The bracelet is nicely made and again, that word solid, it has substance to it. It's also thoughtfully detailed and anything but generic. And whereas Breitling would give you a clamshell closure here, this is a folding clasp with twin trigger release. That is an upscale refinement not expected at this price point. The case itself is only about 13.3 millimeters thick, so it's not a thick watch, and the bezel detent is exemplary. Again, given, given that this watch costs as much as the strap on a Roger Dubuis, you're getting a ton for your money. Blue dial, let's hear the bezel. And because this is a dive watch, let's do a loom shot. There you go, big and blue, and they even added a fully loomed seconds hand. That should be a standard feature on any diver. And remember, dive bezels are easier to read than chronographs. If you don't have to time something over 60 minutes, lining up that minute hand with a dive bezel is the most practical way to gauge the passage of time. I prefer dive watches to chronographs for timing simple intervals. This is a shorter and sweeter episode. I'm trying to mix things up, talk more about fewer watches. And this Audemars Piguet reference 15116 PT Anniversary Edition is an extraordinary anachronism because it revives a high horology movement originally launched in 1953 by Audemars Piguet. This is the reference 2003, an ultra thin, and I mean 1.65 millimeter thin movement originally launched by Giger Lecoult, not for JLC use, but exclusively for use in the 1950s by Vacheron and Audemars Piguet. Audemars launched it in 1953, Vacheron launched it for its anniversary in 1955. As thin as this movement is, it's only handled by the kinds of watchmakers that also work on tourbillon, minute repeater, grand complications, because the extraordinary thin profile of this movement means that when it's taken out of the case, it has a delicacy to it that requires a master's hand. The case in platinum is 32 millimeters in diameter, and make no mistake, this is a man's watch. A 1950s homage in the fashion of the 1950s. It's also only 5.1 millimeters thick, made for the 2000 
anniversary, 125 years of Audemars Piguet. This is a very traditional and august reference of extraordinary rarity and, as you can see, elegance and discretion with a wonderful sunburst blue metallic dial and thin gold baton hands. It is a rare sight and a reminder of why I love Audemars Piguet, even though I'm really not a devotee of the Royal Oak or the offshores. It comes with a full matching Audemars Piguet deployant clasp with a special buckle design to set it apart from other Audemars Piguet logo style folding clasps. This buckle is unique to the model. And of course the watch, all of satin finish adds even more discretion by eschewing high polish on the case. The movement, which as you can see is immaculately hand finished, is probably one of the best ways to get into high horology with simple architectures. Old school center wheel style layout, despite the thinness, and many companies would be happy simply to get a movement this thin to run, Audemars Piguet adjusts it in five positions like a chronometer. The edges are beveled and bright as the shining sun. Not just as bright as the shining sun, but oftentimes as sharp as an interior angle. As you can see, the escape wheel cock has an interior angle. The regulator itself is black polished, as are all of the screw heads, which feature chamfered slots and chamfered circumference. There's a deep engine turning or perlage on the base plate, and you can see the Cote de Genève radiating out across the movement. You could see linear and perfectly aligned from bridge to bridge to bridge, laid down by abrasive wheel with satination of all the individual wheels and chamfering of their spokes and interior circumference. This is as good as great gets. This is a spectacular watch. Laurent Ferrier. Probably the best buy right now in independent true high horology. If we assume that the roughly $1.2 billion a year Audemars Piguet may be independent, but not necessarily an indie, as the smaller independents call themselves, I have to say that Laurent Ferrier leads the line with finishing that approaches the quality you'll find at some of the most august one-stop mom-and-pop shops. Roger Smith, Carrie Voudelainen, one might even say Philippe Dufour are a slight echelon above this, but then again, they also have years long waiting lists and prices that are as extraordinary as their watches. Here, we're talking about the opportunity to get into a watch that's available for purchase now, no waiting, that has one, two, three, four, five interior angles, that has bevels as wide as the Grand Canyon, guilloche engine turning on a 22 karat gold micro rotor, and a double direct impulse escapement patterned after Breguet's natural escapement that eliminates the Swiss lever, reduces friction, improves precision, and increases power reserve to a full three days. Automatic winding, and as you can see, gorgeous on both sides. This is an example of craft art practiced at the highest level. You can see a cloisonne enamel dial. You have the different colors of glass-based paint or vitreous enamel, and then the cloison or gold wires that are hand-formed to create the image of the land masses. Outboard, there's a satin-finished blue metallic track. There are white gold indices, white gold hands, and a second time zone over at nine o'clock. You can see that second time zone is in 24-hour format. So this is the Galet Traveler cloisonne dial. 24-hour second time zone, a center time hand, that can be stepped using a travel time functionality. I'm gonna do my best to hold this a little bit more steady. So you can see the good advantage how I am able to jump that hour hand independently and even drive the date, which is at three o'clock, in both directions. This watch, 41 millimeters in white gold, offers extraordinary quality, handmade and hand finished on both sides. This is the kind of watch whose production volume is constrained not by economics, not by business planning, but by the craft arts involved and the pace of artisanal production. An extraordinary organic case shape sets it apart from others like F.P. Journe that have carved out their own well-known case profiles. This is a watch that represents extraordinary value and extraordinary accomplishment. It's also a handy dandy travel companion. Folks, let me know what do you think of the shorter, sweeter, more illustrative discussion in today's show. And if you have interest in purchasing anything you see here or on our website, reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Remember, we are also buying, so if you want to sell one watch or a full collection, sell it to me. You can see it right here on the show. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.